This episode of Make Live is brought to you by DigiKey. So, uh, we have our next guest, guest, Jared, on the line, and um, the project's out on the roof. Our friend Franny is keeping an eye on it out there and because uh, it involves some fire. And our guest here to talk to us about the Flame Tube project is Jared Ficklin. Jared is principal technologist at Frog Design and is a Rubens Tube expert. He's calling in from Austin, Texas. Hi, Jared. Hello. Thanks for being with us. We're going to fire up the flame tube right now. There Whoa. it goes. Whoa, right on cue. That is impressive. Thank you to Franny, who's out there right now uh, uh, getting it going. Uh, Mark, uh, tell uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Jared. Uh, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell, tell us what we're looking at right now. Well, um, the Rubens tube is a fantastic uh, apparatus for physics. And basically, it's a delicate balance of sound pressure, air pressure, and gas pressure. And what happens is, is, is it 1905, Henry Rubin and the physics community had this big debate over whether light and sound were particles or waves. And so he came up with some math and, and this implement to show that they could be both, that the waves actually come from like the rarefaction and compression of, of molecules. And what happened is he developed math that could describe what would happen if you know these variables. And what happens is that when you put a nice pure tone through it, you will actually see the waveform of sound, which in most cases is a sine curve, right? You're seeing a sine curve dial. Yeah, let's, by we're going to send through a tone right now, and let's see. There we go. Let me lower that. We've got a storm coming in, but yeah. we're, so it's a little windy outside, but we're hoping that we'll get at least a little bit of good behavior out of the thing. Yeah, Franny's we, out there flagging off the wind a little bit. Uh, we're wait, feeding it a standard uh, sine wave. Oh. Wind is the enemy of the Rubens tube. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we ended up with a very, very windy night tonight. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so um, Jared, what can you tell us about building one of these things? They're uh, really easy things to build, but the first thing is you have to be kind of comfortable with fire. Like, if you don't like lighting your barbecue grill open when the piezo thing lights, this may not be for you because, you know, fire can burn. But... After that, it's a very simple thing. All you need is a speaker. You need a length of pipe. I think three-inch pipe works very well. You need some sort of amplifier and some sort of tone, and then a source for gas, which a barbecue uh, tank works really well. And then, essentially, you're going to just drill a lot of holes, and they're going to be very small holes along the top of the pipe, and a half inch apart, and about one sixteenth of an inch in diameter works really well. You leave some space on the ends, and then you're going to need to affix your uh, speaker to one side, and they're going to need to seal off the other side. And uh, we can discuss more about that, but I really like using fast pipe for the end, or you can use latex and rubber. And then you need to create some way to attach the gas, sometimes a little nipple and some, uh, uh, like a brass gas nipple and some lab tubing works well. And you're going to work out a way to hook that up to a regulator. And usually a high pressure regulator works better, the kind with the knob. And then that's pretty much it. Once you have something to generate tone in an amplifier, like a, an old computer speaker that you take apart, then you're in business. And uh, the sine curves, I usually get little apps on my uh, eye device, you know, my iPad or iPhone that will do, do tone generation. And music's really good too, especially music with pure tones like jazz guitar or, or, or piano. But uh, I like doing like pretty much death metal through my Rubens too. It's a lot more exciting. <laughs> Yeah, we've been feeding it lots of sweet techno tunes because that's what I'm into for uh, creating like pulsing flames and yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we would we get most of us geeks know the uh, bass wave is fairly large and impressive with its power, so it can very much influence this balance of gas and air pressure. Great, sweet. So how how high can the flames get? So, you know, it varies, but it doesn't vary as much as people want it to, because everyone's like, you need to go take that to Burning Man and make it 100 feet tall, but you can't make it 100 feet tall. Uh, really, it's uh, that balance of air pressure and gas pressure is what uh, limits the height. So they're usually somewhere around one inches to six inches. And even if you build a really big uh, tube or turn up the gas really high, it really doesn't change that much. Either the gas pressure will overwhelm the air pressure, and all you have is really tall flames where you don't see an effect or the sound pressure overwhelms and just blows out the uh, flames and you don't see it. So uh, you really can't do much more than this uh, because it's all about that balance. Wow. Huh. Yeah, I see. Can we try sending through some music? Oh yeah, sure. I'll stop. Right now it's, we're at a 493 hertz wave. I'm going to stop that and send through maybe this little tune by Colin. 
Let's see. We'll, we'll listen to that. I'm seeing too. it on the fire. Wow, crazy. Oh, wow. I hope you're all able to hear this music that's playing through the. Wow. That's incredible. It's also great music for the robot. <laughs> you build a really good Rubens tube. Um, I have one that's 10 feet long. Um, How many holes does it have in it, the 10-foot long one? <laughs> somewhere over 400. And it's Whoa. Close, it's close and where do you show something like that? You know, I bring it to parties, actually. It's, uh, it stars at, at several parties every year in Austin, and Halloween is one of them. If you're in Austin, uh, you know, follow me on Twitter or something. I'll hook you up with this invite, but you have to wear a costume this party. But uh, it makes a great, like, chimenea, basically. It goes the whole length of, of the patio, keep it a respectable distance away from everyone's hairspray induced hair and try and talk people out of lighting cigarettes on it. But then it, uh, uh, it looks fantastic. You can run it all night. Uh, it, that, and that's one of the things that's really useful about this fast pipe as a connector. I'm leaving about a foot to eight inches of space on the end of your tube because you have radiant heat that can destroy your speaker and then you also have conductive heat going through the pipe and this serves as a good insulator here's one here that i have a speaker attached to the end of and this serves as a good insulator against the heat as well as being able to seal up the gas and i've just taken one of those things put a haul out out of it i've literally attached the speaker to it with some high temperature silicone seal and this can go right on the end of, of your basic fence post. This one happens to be two inch, but this one here is for three inch. And this oh, is yeah. another example of like just a cheap, quick way to build a speaker. This was a $2 find at Goodwill. It's a Sony mid-range, about a hundred watt speaker. And uh, I just put an extra board across the front, made one diameter hole, affixed a piece of fast pipe reducer. And this is the one that I hang on the end of my 10-foot Rubens tube. And I actually put two, one on each side, so we can run it in stereo. And you're going to make sure your phase is correct, or it'll just be canceling itself out. Oh, I see. Awesome. So, uh, so I see some people in the chat mentioning they've seen one built with PVC before. Can you talk about what it's like to make one of these out of PVC? Yeah, I can, because the first one I ever made and put up on YouTube, I made out of PVC. And it turns out that was a pretty dumb idea. I got it to work for a couple minutes. But uh, since then, many, many, many smart people have told me that when PVC heats up, it gives off a very toxic fume, which might explain uh, the mustache, I don't know. And then also it catches on fire. And then lastly, it didn't really work so well. That, that video is deceptive. Every time I had to film another take of that video, I was re-drilling the holes because they were melting shut. Propane burns at 750 degrees. And uh, even with the foil tape on the top, that didn't work. So I go ahead and take the trouble to make it out of metal. And I can give one tip, and it's in the tutorial as well that Bill did, and it's, I'm sorry he couldn't be with us, but um, he has this figured out very well. The tip is how to drill in these metal pipes. And you don't necessarily need a drill press, although it helps. What you really need is one of these. This is a metal awl. It's not a center punch, which you will confuse it for. It's a metal awl. And if you have a piece of pipe, when you're trying to drill, and this is one of my three-foot Rubens tubes that I take to schools. If you just make a little dimple where you're going to drill your hole, then... Yeah, show that a little higher up, Jared. Yeah, great. Little dimple with the, with the metal awl, then that'll hold your 1 16th inch drill bit in place and keep it from wandering. And so that's what makes drilling the holes really easy. Then you just need time and you can use a hand drill to do it. I see. So that's probably one of the key things I, uh, about drilling in metal. And also, you're going to need a lot of 1 16th inch drill bits because you're going to break one about every 50 holes. Or so I found. How big do you make the holes along the pipe? I make them, uh, the, you know, the smaller you can make them, the better. But 1 16th inch drill bit is like the smallest you can pretty much find in a hardware store. So without ordering something online, that and it works pretty well and on a Rubens tube a half an inch apart is good if they're one inch apart um, the flame will propagate itself so if like half of it goes out then it won't spread along but at a half an inch interval if half of it goes out then it tends to relight itself really easily so it's a lot more stable and if you get closer than a half an inch the flames will join and you'll just have one block of flame and you won't be able to see the results so 
So one sixteenth inch holes spaced half an inch apart works really, really well. Now we've got ours really going now. Yeah, it's not the wind's not so bad outside right now. Our friend is doing a good job of flagging the wind. Oh, oh we spoke too soon. <laughs> it's pretty turbulent out there, but you guys see it. It's pretty, I think there it's mesmerizing go. even when it's not performing at its optimal best. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite comments of all time on one of my videos was, um, fire makes even jazz music cool. <laughs> <laughs> I can get down with that. <laughs> no, jazz is great. <laughs> saying fire makes everything better. <laughs> which I agree with, actually. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, Jared, about this really awesome project. If you want to um, build one of your own out there in the audience, it's up on Make Projects, same as um, the Drill Cart and many other projects from Make Volume 26. So you can head over to makeprojects.com and uh, go check out the Flame Tube project. Yeah, See? oh yeah, <laughs> Jared's waving his fire extinguisher. So a word about, we'll talk about safety, right? So Franny's out there with a fire extinguisher and a wet towel and a bucket of water. She's got everything she needs. So uh, be safe when you're doing your DIY projects, especially the flame tube. Yes. Thank you guys. Yeah, Thank you. thanks you. Thank you so much, Jared. Great. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. The flame tube's outside. I, I want to go hang out with it. Yeah. It's like you can sit there and like roast marshmallows or something. Yeah, we, <laughs> after the show, I think we'll, we'll play with it a little bit yeah. more. <laughs> we'll have a, a disco dance party on yeah. the roof with the flame tube. Yeah. Sweet.